This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another MIDI Composer 101 tutorial, and in this lesson, we're going back to another question that I saw asked on the Avid Editors of Facebook page. Now, the reason I like to sort of do tutorials to a lot of these questions is because they're very common questions that a lot of people ask. And this was a good one. The question basically was, I want to export MPEG-4s to send to a client. The problem is that I can't seem to figure out a way to do that in Media Composer. So what is the best way to go about doing that? Well, believe it or not, in a lot of cases, as much as you might think that you're going to want to export as a specific file type from Media Composer, you might not necessarily want to do that. Why is that? Because there's other programs out there that will handle things like file compression for the web or you know to send approval files much better than Media Composer does. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you a great, absolutely free tool that you can use to compress files to email to a client, even possibly to use on the web. The program is called MPEG Stream Clip, and if you haven't heard of it, it's a fantastic tool. And you can head on over to Google, punch in MPEG Stream Clip, download it for either Mac and Windows, and get up and running with it as soon as you're done watching this tutorial. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer, and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. Now again, you know, just because you can export a specific type of file from Media Composer, again, like I said before, doesn't necessarily mean you should because a lot of these compression programs are really designed to do that a lot better than Media Composer is. Now what a lot of people think that you're going to do, in this case you'll see that I have a sequence put together. Now I made this sequence a minute long for a specific reason because I want to show you file sizes when we get out of Media Composer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this file and I'm going to export it as a QuickTime Same as Source. What I'm going to do is simply right click, I'm going to say Export, we're going to head to the desktop, I'm just going to call this ProRes Same as Source, we'll call it SAS, okay? Because this was a ProRes file that I consolidated to get, or ProRes files that I consolidated to get into Media Composer. We're just going to set our export settings to be a Same as Source, you'll see right here. Video and audio, we'll make sure our audio is set to stereo, not direct out. In this case, it doesn't really matter because I only have two channels. But if I had multiple channels and I wanted them to be stereo, that's how I would export them. What I'm going to do, say save, send this to the desktop. Okay. Now, the other way that people think that they're going to go about doing this is to do a, not necessarily a real-time, but an as-you-export conversion to a specific file format. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, I'm going to come back to export. And instead of exporting as the same as source, what you could do is a custom export where you're going to come into the format options, you'll come into video settings, and you can attempt to export this in any one of these different codecs that are available to you inside of your export window. But you will notice that MPEG-4 is down here. But like I said, in most cases, you're not going to want to do this. Now, you know, I've got a video that's a minute long, so to be honest, if I was to do something like that from here, it's not a big deal. A lot of people are exporting things like shows, you know, 20 minute long pieces, things like that, where to be honest, you don't want to sit around and wait for this to export. I would rather export this, have the other program start doing what it needs to do in the background so that I can keep working, okay? So we're going to export as a same as source file. I'm going to cancel here. I'm going to cancel again. Or what we're going to do is we're going to export as a QuickTime reference. What I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to call it ProRes just for the sake of us keeping track of these. And I'm just going to call this QT Ref, okay? Just like that, okay? And I'm simply going to say save. And this is going to go to the desktop. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that when you export a QuickTime reference file, it's actually going to give you two files. It's going to give you the video here. You can see the QuickTime. And it's going to give you the associated audio file. If you delete that audio file, there's nothing embedded in this QuickTime file. You'll see that if I right click and I say get info, the actual size of this file is about 25 kilobytes. Why? Because remember, all it's doing is referencing media that already exists inside of my G Speed Studio RAID right here. Now, the audio file for this minute long piece is, let's go to get info here, is 12 megabytes. So that's 12 megabytes per minute. Okay, so if you had 10 minutes, that's 120 megabytes. If you had 100 minutes, you know, that's what? That's 1.2 gigabytes, which is nothing. Okay, 
The other great thing is the export takes as long as it would take to export a track of audio from Media Composer. Now, Statement Source Export is still very quick. Assuming that you've working with a Media Composer friendly codec inside of Media Composer, you'll see that I have that ProRes file right here. I'm just going to say Get Info. And you'll see that this file is, of course, ProRes 422 because that's how I exported it. This file is a little bit different because it's the same as source and it's an actual QuickTime with, you know, with content to it. This is actually almost a gigabyte big. So, of course, if you think about it, for every 11 minutes of content, you'll have about a 10 gigabyte file size. Now, at the end of the day, you know, it's really up to you how you want to go about exporting. Do you want to export it as the full um, QuickTime file or do you want to export as reference? In most cases, I'm exporting as a reference file strictly because I want to save space and I'm really only going to do these as a one-off to send to my client. Okay, so how do we get in now and make this MPEG-4? Well, you'll remember that I said in the intro we're going to use a program called MPEG Stream Clip to make this MPEG-4 file. Why do I choose it? Well, not only is it totally awesome, but it's also totally free. So you can just, again, like I said, head on, head on into Google, type in MPEG Stream Clip. Once you have it downloaded, and if you're on the Mac, the Windows version works, you know, more or less exactly the same as the Mac version. As you'll see that I have it right here. I'm simply going to open it, and the first thing I need to do is to bring a file in. So in this case, I'm just going to use the reference file, okay? Let's take the reference file. I'm going to drag it and drop it right in here, just like such. Here's the, the QuickTime movie exactly as I had it inside a Media Composer, okay? You'll see it's a minute and one frame long. That's okay. We'll, we'll say that that one little frame there is okay. I'm probably not adding too much size to our clip here, although this is the QuickTime reference file, okay? Now, the great thing with MPEG Stream Clip is that you actually have a ton of flexibility in the type of file that you want to export from the application. So let's just use QuickTime as a reference. We know that with QuickTime, there's a million different types of codecs. So if I navigate up to the file dropdown and I come down to Export to QuickTime, you'll see that inside of the Movie Exporter window, I actually have access to all of the different Apple codecs or QuickTime codecs that are installed on my computer. So I could conceivably export as DNxHD, DNxHR, ProRes, you know, H.264, you know, pretty much whatever I want. Now, most people say, well, Kev, we were talking about MPEG at the start of this tutorial. So where does MPEG sort of fall into things? Well, believe it or not, MPEG actually has its own category. If I navigate back up to file, I come down to export to MPEG right here, MPEG4. You'll see that my compression type is a lot easier. My choices basically are H.264, an Apple MPEG-4 compressor. Now, to be honest, it doesn't really matter which one you pick. In most cases, I stick with H.264. I'll always put the quality up at 100%. And normally for me, when I send files out, I always like to limit the data rate to something that's not ridiculous. So in this case, let's limit the data rate not to kilobits per second, because I'd be getting into like, you know, 8,000, 7,000. We're actually going to adjust this to be megabits per second right here, okay? And I'm just going to say, let's export this as, I don't know, 8 megabits per second, okay? You'll see that it's going to tell me that for a minute-long clip, the file size is going to be, you know, give or take about 59 megabytes. This is actually very cool. So I can come down and say, well, you know, that's way too big. Maybe I only want it to be 30 megabytes. Boom, there we go, okay? The other thing we have the ability to do is to actually adjust the frame size. So if I don't want to export as the full size 1920 by 1080, I can get in and adjust this however I want to right here inside the frame size. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this about, I don't know, six megabytes per second or six megabits per second and let's get in now and let's set up our sound we, we can stick with mpeg4 that's fine stereo auto normally what i do for my tutorials when i record my tutorials i'm normally at about 96 or 128 kilobits per second only because we're only dealing with my voice if you're getting into things like music sound effects you're going to want to go a little bit higher than that but in most cases when i'm sending stuff to the client even if it has music about 128 kilobits per second okay now, one thing that I love about MPEG Stream Clip is, especially if you're working in interlace material, you actually have the ability to get in right here and de-interlace that video. And it does an exceptionally good job at de-interlacing that video so you don't get any of those little jaggies when you have a lot of movement in your shot. Okay? We can also get in, set up the field dominance. We can even adjust the rotation. But at this point, the most important thing that we're going to want to do is save a preset for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this Presets. I'm going to call this, we'll make a new preset, create a new preset, yes. We're going to call this for client approval. Okay. There we go. I'm going to say okay. And what we're going to do is I'll just say load. Okay. Now I'm actually going to cancel out of this. I'm going to quit out of MPEG stream clip because I want to just come right back in. I'm going to drag this QuickTime reference file back in. I'm going to come back up to file. I'm going to come down to export to MPEG. All I'm going to do now is instead of getting in and making adjustments here, 
I'm simply going to come down to my presets. I'm going to select for client approval. I'm going to say load, and there's everything exactly the way that I had it before I saved that preset. Now, of course, I can get in and make this a multi-pass if I wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it the way that it is, and all I'm going to do is say make MPEG4. It's going to ask me where do I want to make it. I can leave it exactly the same name as the file that's already there. I'm simply going to say save, and there it goes. Now, of course, I could, you know, come back in a media composer here. I could, you know, keep going back through, you know, making edits, doing all my type of stuff while MPEG Stream Clip is going in the background. This is what I love about it. You could set up almost like, you know, uh, background processing of your exports because, again, QuickTime reference files. And there's no slowdown. I'm just going to turn the music off here just for the purpose of me not having to hear it. But I'm playing this back all in real time. No issues, no concerns, nothing. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hide Media Composer again because this is going to be done pretty shortly here. Obviously, your, your processing time will vary based on your system, you know, connection to drives and things like that. But again, like I said, just the fact that you can do this in the background and go back into Media Composer, go into After Effects and continue to do whatever you need to do is really, really good. Now, you'll see that we're at about 40 seconds and it looks like it seems to be taking about real time. This clip was a minute long. It looks like it was probably going to take about a minute to process this file, maybe a little bit shorter. And when it's done, I'm more so curious to see, in comparison to the full ProRes file, how big this file actually turned out to be. And I'm curious to also double check what it thought it was going to be, you know, the file size versus what it actually is. So let's take a look at that first. What I'm going to do is when it's done, there we go. I'm just going to come right back into File, Export to MPEG4. You'll see that with our uh, preset loaded, it says about 44 megabytes. So the question is, did it actually make it that size? Here's my file right here, .mpeg4, 44 megabytes. Let's go get info. And this file is about 46 megabytes. So give or take a little bit on that 44 megabytes, MPEG Stream Clip was pretty much dead on. And of course, in comparison, what I should have done was left that up here. Let's just say get info. Let's get info of our actual ProRes file, get info. You're talking about 847 megabytes versus 47 megabytes. And of course the quality here is ridiculously good. I'm just gonna hit the space bar. To be honest, at this stage you probably wouldn't even notice that this was an MPEG-4 file in comparison to the original ProRes file. Now of course where you'd notice it is that if you send it to a station and it had to be compressed up on the air, that's where you start to notice the compression, especially in the darker areas of the shot. And to be honest, for a client approval, this file's quality is fantastic. It's a little bit bigger than a file that you would email, but I mean, if you're working on promos, you know, and you're using something like Gmail, I believe 20 megabytes is the cap, you know, or if you happen to be sending this via, you know, Dropbox or you send it, pardon me, it's called Hightail now, but Hightail, this is a file that's very simple to get out there and get to your clients so they can approve it and get back to you lightning quick. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.